All right, hello there. So here we are, another episode, and this time we are going to be uh, talking about pixie booting um, a bunch of uh, machines in my home lab. Now, um, just a bit of a background about how I got to this point, right? In my work at Canonical, I I, I work with a bunch of uh, products, including Metal as a Service, otherwise known as Maz, right? Now, Maz is a great product. Uh, if you head on over to uh, the Ubuntu website and you try to download the Ubuntu server, you'll see it as option number two here, right? Uh, so, Maz is a way for you to manage a bunch of bare metal machines as if they were cloud instances, right? So, you just click a few buttons and then you get your own uh, bare metal machine, whether it's, you know, Ubuntu installed or, or CentOS or whatever other uh, operating system MAS supports. Now, um, I like to experiment with MAS in my home machine. So I have a few uh, Nook servers lying down over here and I install MAS in them and then I manage a bunch of other machines. I could also be, I could be managing ver uh, bare metal machines or uh, virtual machines because mass can also uh, uh, manage that now um, when I do my experimentation uh, the layout usually looks like this uh, the network layout where uh, my home Wi-Fi uh, is over here and let's say it uh, has a subnet of 192.168.86 right and that's connected to my gateway which has a firewall and there's the big bad internet over there right and my lab network is an isolated L2 network, uh, but it has a gateway that allows me to go out uh, into either my home Wi-Fi, uh, my home network, or the internet, right? And <clears throat> most of the things that are connected here, uh, number one is my workstation, this one that I have working over here. Um, and that's just connected to the Wi-Fi. Uh, I also have a uh, Raspberry Pi, which uh, acts as a wake on LAN server as well as a jump box so that my workstation can uh, SSH to any of these machines over here um, uh, via, uh, via the jump box, right? Um, uh, another machine that I have in my home network or in my lab network is a Synology uh, DS418 NAS. Right, I call it Diego NASA One. Uh, it also happens to be connected uh, to the Wi-Fi uh, over here, but I didn't show it. All right, um, and then I have my mass uh, machines. Right, so dot eleven and dot twelve would be mass one, mass two, and I would have other machines in there that uh, mass would manage for me. Right. Now there often comes a time when during the experimentation of mass in this network, um, I have to reinstall it and I also just because I want to start uh, with a clean operating system uh, I have to tear down mass I have to tear down the operating system and then reinstall it in these machines now the problem with that is because mass is not around then I have to reinstall the operating system manually and I hate reinstalling the operating system manually uh, because it's tedious and also because it, it's an error prone process. So I wanted to automate that, right? Now it's important to point out that I started out as a software developer and I've done, I've gone deeper and deeper into the ops side uh, of things, mainly because I find that there are so many things, so many opportunities for op automation in the ops side. But more importantly, it's automation problems that ultimately are relevant in my case because it deals with computers, deals with stuff that support the applications that I write. So I've gotten this far and I'll probably go further into um, uh, infrastructure uh, as my uh, as my career progresses. But anyway, uh, that's how I got to this point now. So if I have to tear down MAS, but I still want to automate the installation of my operating system of Ubuntu, right? which will host mass. Um, I obviously need a Pixie server, right? Um, so the plan then is to shut down uh, these machines, right, mass, set up a temporary uh, Pixie server in my lab network, right? So that uh, when I boot up my mass operating systems, I force them to Pixie boot and they will uh, get in touch with the temporary DHCP, TFTP, and Pixie server, and then 
get all their stuff from there. And within minutes, um, I get a fresh operating system in my machine in my, or in my two machines um, ready to go, right? Now, uh, of course, when that process is done, just before I start installing Maz, I have to shut down the, uh, the my Pixie server over here. Or more importantly, they're just the DHCP server, right? At least the DHCP server. So that Maz, you know, it won't conflict with Maz, which prefers to be the DHCP server in the subnet, right? Or in the L2 network. All right. Now, we could combine the DHCP, TFTP, and Pixie server, like in this diagram, which is which I got from Wikipedia, by the way, All right? Um, like, it could be hosted in a Raspberry Pi, for example, All right? And we could do that, but I didn't want to mess around with uh, setting up a, a separate operating system manually. <laughs> Again, manual process, right? Um, and then... Um, messing around with a DHCP, TFTP, and Pixie server rather than configuring them and, you know, just getting and going going from there. But maybe at a later time, we will do that. We will combine DHCP, TFTP, and Pixie in a single Raspberry Pi and use that to uh, Pixie boot our NAS hosts, right? But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to use whatever is already available in my... Um, in my network, right? So in my lab network, I happen to have, um, first of all, this gateway over here is actually a Ubiquiti um, Edge Router X, right? And the nice thing about the uh, Edge Router X or any other Ubiquiti router that runs Edge OS is that it happens to have uh, DHCP service uh, available over here, right? And if you look at the config tree, and you look at uh, DHCP server, shared network, no, we, we don't have that over here. But uh, later on when we configure this, we can also include um, instructions on where to find uh, the TFTC, TFTP server where it can get uh, the boot file. Right. So that solves our DHCP problem. The next thing that we're missing is a TFTP, an HTTP server, right? Or basically the the, the, the Pixie server itself. Well, it just happens that NAS, uh, the uh, Synology, also provides that service. And we, if we look over here, um, we look at the control panel under File Services, we can see that it can provide a TFTP service, right? And right now, the TFTP root folder is in a folder called Pixie, right? And it can also be uh, a web server. And you do that by downloading or installing the web station package. It's very easy to do in Synology, of course, right? And then we have a virtual host over here. Right? If you look at that, it has a port-based uh, HTTP ser uh, virtual server, uh, listening on port 8080, and it's also using the same uh, document route uh, for serving files. Now, I've also enabled PHP over here, and we'll we'll see in a while why we're doing that. But yes, we have um, all of the basic services that are needed to actually do um, Pixie booting uh, uh, in the current uh, environment that I have over here. So if we look at that Pixie uh, directory, you'll see that uh, there's nothing in there, right? Uh, same with uh, Edge OS. So um, right now, Edge OS is just acting as a, a gateway to the larger network. And uh, the, uh, the Synology is just acting as an ordinary NAS, right? But we can add files to them. We can configure their services so that they become a combined uh, Pixie uh, uh, server environment, right? All right, so I know what you're probably thinking right now. So you want to automate this process, but it seems like you have a lot of manual things to do here. Like in Edge, in Edge OS, you have to manually set up uh, the DHCP server. And in Diego NAS, you have to uh, write the files in the, uh, in the Pixie shared directory for stuff to work, right? 
So it seems like a lot of effort is involved. But the thing is, um, the cool thing about these two machines is, for example, uh, with the Edge Router, it is actually running a flavor of Linux. That means I can automate that with some configuration management uh, tool, right? And the same thing with our NAS over here, right? It also happens to be running a flavor of Linux. Great, so I can automate these things. Now the tool that we're going to use to automate uh, the setup of our Pixie server, our DHCP and our Pixie server, uh, is going to be uh, a tool called Pi Infra, right? Now Pi Infra um, is a really cool tool and it's very simple to use. Like you would normally just go Pi Infra and then give it an inventory, right? Which lists all the servers that you want to configure and you give it another file uh, which lists the operations that you want to uh, do with those servers, right? Now, notice that I'm providing it uh, Python files for both the inventory and the operations file, right? Which is a cool thing, because then you get to do real programming um, when you do um, these, uh, when you create your inventory and operations. You can create dynamic stuff around it, um, uh, which is very easy to do, right? If we look quickly at the operations that are available for Pi Infra, uh, we'll see, for example, the files operations. You know, you can uh, render a template and put it in a certain location, right? And you can force it to create a remote directory if it's if it doesn't exist. Um, has a bunch of other um, uh, operations available over here, like the system D operation uh, is available for you to use. There's also the uh, server operation, right? Like for example, if you want to just execute uh, a shell command, you have server.shell that's available. And again, because it's Python, right? And if you're already familiar with Python, this this isn't, you know, there's not much learning uh, to do here. And the even cooler thing about PyInfra is that because it's Python, right? Your IDE, which does auto-completion, can support this automatically, right? So by now you're probably thinking, huh, PyInfra looks a lot or behaves a lot like Ansible. And you would be right. They belong the same uh, problem domain, right? They're trying to solve the same things. But the difference between PyInfra and Ansible is that with PyInfra, you're defining all your inv inventory, your tasks, um, uh, in, in plain Python, right? Whereas in Ansible, you have to deal with YAML for defining your tasks and then shift to Python for defining your filters or creating the modules and so on, right? Now, don't get me wrong, right? I've used Ansible for so many years. I've even talked in one of their conferences in New York at one point, right? Uh, Ansible solved a lot of problems for me back in the days. But this time around, I wanted to use something um, that was much simpler um, and didn't reinvent the wheel by creating what started out as a declarative YAML-based domain-specific language that's slowly turning into a, a, a Turing-complete uh, language. So it was at that point where I started thinking, wait, if, if this YAML thing is becoming its own programming language, why don't we just use Python directly? Right, and thankfully, uh, in my search, right, I found Pi Infra, and it does most of the things that I need, including setting up my Pixie server. Right. All right. So enough about that. Right. Let's get to the uh, let's get to the fun part. So uh, first of all, um, I am going to um, show you the configuration that I am going to. Uh, use for uh, for for my Pixie uh, service, right? So I have an example directory over here under my um, aircraft project, which is also in GitHub, right? So um, first of all, the inventory I've defined my DHCP server group, right? And this is uh, 
um, the IP address of my Ubiquiti uh, ERX uh, in my home network. And then I have a Pixie server. Uh, and this is the uh, IP address of my Synology NAS in the home network, right? And remember, it also has um, uh, an IP address in the lab network because it has it happens to have two uh, NICs available. All right. Now, um, I also have uh, operation files over here. Number one is the enable operations. Now, I've defined um, a bunch of operations in their own um, Python module over here. Like, for example, the DHCP server uh, for Edge OS. I've defined it under source, aircraft, deploys, network, Edge OS, right, and DHCP server over there. Um, and that one is just a bunch of PyInfra operations, right, with some uh, wrappers around it so that I can reuse them, right? But it's, again, it's just plain Python. And that allows me to just say, if the current server that PyInfra is operating in happens to belong to the DHCP server group, then run the DHCP server configure um, group of operations, which is uh, this thing over here, right? So what it will do is render the configuration script, execute, and then execute it, right? So really cool. Now the last thing I want to show you is the um, group data, all right? So group data allows us to define variables that are available to um, uh, our operations over here, depending on which machine there or uh, which machine in the inventory they're operating on, right? Um, so for here, I am defining my uh, Pixie data, right? So, and I am also defining my DHCP data, right? So for our DHCP, our shared ne network name is going to be Pixie LAN. Subnet is going to be .100.0 slash 24. Um, and then the DHCP range will start at .200 to .254. Default router will be .1. And then the DNS server will be my um, uh, my home AP, right? And then the boot file server will be the TFTP address that's defined um, over here in my Pixie um, data, right? So I have uh, specified that my uh, TFTP address is dot three, right? And that's already configured in uh, Synology. And uh, my HTTP uh, base address is going to be dot three port 8080. And then I'm also going to tell it where to, where to download um, the ISO that will be used to install uh, into our servers, right? I, I can also specify the SHA-256 sum of uh, my image to ensure that I actually got what I'm looking for, right? And then I also have to indicate my grub image, the, you know, the, the, the grub interface, the bootloader interface that comes up uh, before Ubuntu, right? And I also give it a SHA-256 uh, sum over here to ensure that I'm getting what I'm expecting. And then I also list down the machines uh, that the Pixie server is going to be uh, working with, right? And those machines are defined over here. So, um, so the first machine that I want to install Ubuntu on is named KVM1. Let's rename that to uh, MAS1, right? And that's its MAC address. And then for the provisioning IP, the temporary provisioning IP, right? It's going to be 201. Um, and then for the static IP, the final IP, it's going to be dot 11. Just like what it's shown over here um, in our diagram. That's going to be MAS11 over there, right? And then for this one, for this second machine, that's going to be MAS02, right? And same thing. Um, but with a static IP of dot twelve, right? Again, that's what its uh, IP here uh, in our lab network, right? So I could talk some more about this, but let's just uh, get started by um, configuring these uh, my Pixie server and then rebooting the machines, right? So first of all, I say pi infra, and then 
I give it my inventory, right, which it's which is pixie.py, and then what's the operation that we're going to do? We're going to run the enable pixie um, operation. So we'll do that. And let's scroll this up over here. All right, so right now it's downloading the operating system image. This is going to take a while because it's a 900 MB uh, image. It'll take a few minutes, but um, let's speed up the video. All right, so that's done. Let's see what just happened here. Now, first of all, um, let's just pay attention first to the cleanliness of uh, PyInfra's interface over here. So I really like how um, very readable it is, you know, saying it's rendering the configuration script and then success. Very clean interface. I like it. Now, if you wanted to get more details out of the PyInfra execution, uh, we could have just said... Um, over here we could have added dot v all the way to three v's if you want and then debug as well right and that that'll give us more information now we could rerun our um pine for operation here and it wouldn't do anything because um uh, everything's already there and just to prove that uh let's see that happen again but this time with uh uh, uh verbose right all right so uh, as you can see uh, nothing to delete there um, and then uh, it didn't need to download uh, the operating system image because it found that the uh, the checksum of the image matches the checksum that we've declared over here right so that's cool right. if we look at our Synology over here we'll see a bunch of files now available first of all the ISO that we downloaded right but it also has a bunch of other things for example um, the kernel the compressed kernel is over here uh, the RAM disk is also over here um, and where did that come from it actually our Pi Infra operations over here our Pi Infra project actually extracted it from uh, from the ISO right so that um, our machines can pixie boot and of course we also have uh, our grub image here by the name of pixie linux.0 right and then uh, in the grub subdirectory we have uh, the configuration right which will show later on you know what what options it's made available for us and finally we have our user data right our user data contains an index.php file and we can look at that uh, .php file so we go over to our NAS over here and then go to the volume where our pixie uh, folder is right and then go to user data and then we can cat our uh, PHP file and all it's doing is logging um, you know the remote address or the client address uh, and also um, reading a file with the file name uh, having the same name as the remote address or the IP address, right? And since we have uh, 192.168 over there, 192.168.100.201 and dot two two over there, uh, so this index.php is going to serve up either this file or this file depending on who's requesting, right? So if you look at 192.168.201, what is it? It is just user data, a cloud config uh, file that uh, cloud init will use, will consume um, to uh, install and configure the operating system in the target machine, right? So that's cool. Uh, we have that over there. Um, and what else do we have? So that's that's basically the, the Pixie side of things. What about the DHCP server, right? So. Um, Edge OS uh, or Edge Max over here noticed that the configuration has changed because um, Pi Infra did some changes over here via SSH. And then if you refresh that, we go to services, we're going to see that indeed we have our 
uh, Pixie, uh, our DHCP server configured. And if you look at the details, we see that the range start is 200, range stop is 254, the router is itself, and then the DNS server is my home AP. Right? And then it also has static mapping over here. So uh, for MAS01 with a given MAC address, it will be assigned, temporarily assigned, dot two oh one and then this one is dot two oh two and that's how um and that's how our uh, pixie server will know which cloud init file to serve based on the IP address right um so what's next what are we gonna do what we're going to do then next is um we're gonna start pixie booting right in order for me to show you that since this machine is connected to another monitor uh, I need to record this for you so let me go ahead and do that right now um, so we have that's going to be our mass 02 look that's connected to um, this monitor over here oh, zoomed in okay that monitor over there right and then we also have our mass 1 which is right there, right? and then our NAS is right there, and then directly on top of that is just an unmanaged um, switch, and then on top of that unmanaged switch is the Edge Router X, right? Those th those are the ones that we configured earlier uh, to be the uh, combined uh, Pixie server, right? Okay, so this one's turned off right now. We're gonna turn it on. And then we should see a boot up sequence uh, show up in the monitor. And then I am going to press F12 to make it network boot. Right. And, you know, unwritten rule says always press it multiple times just to be sure. Okay, so now it's uh, Pixie booting, right? And I have the option to use the live installer, the automated one or the manual one. That's five seconds, so I let it do the uh, automated one. Oh, zoom on. Okay, so there we go. Um, it's loading up. It's downloading the ISO from our uh, NAS. Boot up process. Should get to a point where it's starting to subiquity uh, will start up and then configure the operating system based on the cloud init uh, file that it got from our server. All right, so subiquity is running now. And it's using that cloud init file that I showed you earlier to configure the machine. Doing the partitions now. Installing the kernel. Installing the OpenSSH server. And then some security updates. All right, finally, done downloading that um, security fix. Apparently, it's a bad time to be uh, reinstalling an operating system right now because everyone else is using uh, the Wi-Fi. Right? My, my two boys are playing on, on the Xbox. My wife is watching a Netflix movie. So this took longer than expected, but at least it was hands-free. Like I didn't have to do anything. I didn't have to enter stuff. I just pressed F12 and then uh, it started on its merry way. All right, so now it's booting up. And as you can see, it is now named Mass02. And let's see. Um, I can reach out to this because it, it should have an IP of 192.168.100.1.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.0.
dot one two. Yes. All right. So let's e let's exit from here. Go back to our terminal. All right. So I'm gonna go to my jump box over here. Remember that I have a jump box right there that I can SSH to, and then it can reach out to any of these machines. We're gonna use that jump box to reach out to dot twelve, right? So let's see if that works. SSH one two dot one six eight dot one hundred dot one two. Right. Yes. All right. Mazur 2. What else do we configure here? So we configured it to have um, what is its user data supposed to be? Um, let's see in NAS user data cat 192.202. Right. So mass 2 It should have. Um, uh, uh, a root volume Ubuntu LV of size about uh, this is about 200 gigabytes I believe so let's do that here All right root volume about 200 gigabytes yeah and the boot EFI and boot are configured as expected cool and again and so now that I am done with uh, pixie booting this, I, I didn't pixie boot uh, uh, the first machine, but that's no problem. We can we can deal with that later. Uh, I can then go ahead and disable uh, our uh, pixie stuff, right? So I'm just going to do disable pixie. Oops. Right. Out. So PyInfra is going to run, and uh, it's going to run some uh, another configuration script in our DHCP server. Just our DHCP server. It's not going to do anything to the NAS because, well, what's the point, right? Files are already, are already there. We're going to keep it there, right? So if we go back to our Edge OS and refresh, we'll see that the DHCP server is, are, is no longer there. Um, and so we can start installing MAS in our uh, bare operating system, bare metals over here. Um, and then it'll become the DHCP server um, in our lab net. And there you go. Uh, very quick and easy installation of the operating systems that will host MAS uh, over here. Um, uh, that was it. Now, um, for all the code that I'm using, now, as always, it is available on GitHub and it, it comes with a readme. Right? This project is called Aircraft. So on GitHub, uh, Aircraft, under the uh, Relax Diego namespace, you will find it here. Uh, aircraft is uh, stuff, it comes with uh, some instructions on how to get started. Uh, it comes with the example um, uh, directory that I use to configure my uh, my Pixie uh, my Pixie server, right? Like the group data, for example, over here. You can check that out. Um, yeah, and if you have any uh, questions, you can ping me anywhere. It could be LinkedIn, it could even be via an issue over here in GitHub. Uh, I'm everywhere on the internet. So, yeah, that's it. Thank you for watching.